In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can calculate your capital gains tax on your investment property in Australia. Hey guys, my name is Michael and I'm an accountant from Australia. You guys really enjoyed my how to eliminate capital gains tax on an investment property video. So I thought it would be helpful for me to show you how you can actually calculate your capital gains tax. So to go with that, I have provided a outline of a little calculator you can use to figure out your capital gains tax obligation on an investment property here in Australia. So this little calculator is gonna give you a pretty good idea of what your tax obligation will be sitting at going into tax time. But if you're not too comfortable doing this yourself, I would highly recommend you getting an accountant because they're highly specialized and know exactly what they're doing when it comes to this type of thing. I just wanna let you know that this example is gonna be pretty basic and we're not gonna be going too in depth with anything to do with property developments or anything like that. We're just gonna be buying a residential investment property and selling the same property a couple of years later. So I've made up these two settlement statements that we're gonna be using to calculate our capital gains tax. One was obviously on the purchase side and one was on the sale side. So let's jump into the numbers. As you can see, the first thing that we need to be putting into the calculator is the date purchased. You can just simply find that on your purchase settlement statement and that's gonna be the settlement date at the top. So as you can see there, ours is the 30th of May, 2010. Next thing on the calculator is the date sold. So again, grab your settlement statement, but this time the sale one, and let's look at the settlement date, 30 May, 2021. So we'll throw that in there as well. Next on the calculator is actually the monies received for the sale. So the sales price can be found on the sale settlement statement, and that is just the gross contract price. So in our example, that is $1 million. And as I said, because this example is very simplistic, we just have the gross sales price here. Another thing you may need to consider is if any of your sales price is actually relating to the property plant and equipment that you've installed in your investment property during the time, such as a dishwasher, fridge, oven, you know, all those sorts of things that are actually you could take with you when you sell the property. Talk to your accountant about this. There may be some things in your contract or with your lawyer. Um, so just be careful about this one. But in this example, as I said, it's really simple. We're not gonna have any of that. Next, we need to consider the cost base of the property. So the first item on the agenda is the gross purchase price. So we're gonna look at the purchase settlement statement. And in our example, that's $500,000. Next on our calculator is transfer duty, also known as stamp duty. Um, so if you look at your purchase settlement statement, that's going to be towards the bottom half. And in this example, it's the Office of State Revenue line, equaling $15,925. Then included in the cost base, we also need to consider any legal fees on the purchase and legal fees on the sale. So looking at both settlement statements, towards the bottom half near where that Office of State Revenue was, there's usually going to be a check withdrawn by your lawyer before they pay out the fees to you. So as you can see on our sales settlement statement, we've just got the line there for lawyer fees. And on the purchase settlement statement, we've got the line there for professional fees and outlays. So we've just put them both into our calculator here at $1,500 each. The next thing to consider is any commission on sale. So this is gonna be any fees you pay to a real estate agent um, for them selling your property. So that will usually be on your sale settlement statement but um, as you can see on our settlement statement, we don't have that here. We're just gonna assume that maybe they sold it by themselves without the, the help of a real estate agent. But if you did have a fee from a real estate agent for selling your property, you would also include it in the cost base calculator here. Next on the calculator are any non-deductible holding costs. This is a pretty broad category and can mean a whole range of things. The only thing that we have looking at our two settlement statements here is from the purchase, which is the registration fees. Body corporate certificate, building and pest compliance reports, council rates and registration fee, in the top half of our purchase settlement statement are actual deductible costs and you would include them in your tax return as deductions against income when you rented out the property. So we're gonna add that $2,500 registration fees into our non-deductible holding costs. All right, so that's all of the information gathered from our settlement statements. And now we just need to calculate what our capital gains liability is going to be. So first, what we need to do is add up all of the cost base items. As you can see in our example, our cost base is $521,425. Then we subtract that total cost base from the sales proceeds received. So we have the $1 million minus $521,425 equals our gross capital gain of $478,575. But in Australia, if you hold a capital item for longer than 12 months, you're eligible to discount your gross capital gain by 50%. So if you multiply your gross capital gain by 50% or divide it by two, 
that will give you your net capital gain. So in our example, our net capital gain is $239,000. $287.50. That would be your capital gain liability right at the bottom there, about $240,000. And this $240,000 gets added to your tax return as capital gains, and you will pay tax on that at your marginal tax rate. So this would put you in the highest tax bracket and you'd pay tax at about 47%. Meaning if you had no other income or deductions for the year, your tax liability would be about $112,000. Obviously, $112,000 is a lot of money. So if you want to learn how to reduce or completely eliminate any capital gains tax on an investment property, I've done a video earlier about that. So please see that on screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I upload videos all about accounting, tax, money, investing. These are all the things I'm interested in. So if you're also interested in them, please consider following along.